Hey, what's up? Tim Sykes here. Uh, another video as most people wind down for the holidays, they make excuses why they can't work, why they can't trade. Oh, it's the season. Life isn't about money. Guess what? I ramp up. Why? Because we have the Santa Claus rally. Then we have the January effect, which I've been going over in recent videos. You must be prepared. You must capitalize on the gifts that the market gives us. Yes, it is the holiday season. Yes, it is about gift giving. And the market is giving us gifts almost every single day right now. The question is, will you accept those gifts? I think it's rude not to accept the gifts. You tell me in the comments below, will you accept the gifts that the market is giving you right now? Whether or not you're trading, whether or not you're trading big, you're still learning. And I want you to really focus on these plays during the Santa Claus rally, during the January effect, because this is when your account can really grow, not just your bank account or your trading account, your knowledge account. You need to get experience seeing these ridiculous quote black swans. As short sellers leave long, whiny, introspective tweets and they, you know, try to just make everyone forget that they are on the complete wrong side of these things. Um, guess what? You can buy these things and we are alerting them whether you're using XGPT, whether you're using Oracle, whether you're using stocks to trade breaking news. My team and I have been hard at work coming up with tools galore to help you identify these plays quickly. But identifying them is just half the battle. You also have to know how to trade them. It's scary to trade them. It's scary to chase them. Um, I oftentimes miss the initial run up. But what I like doing is buying the dips. Dips haven't been uh, working that great. It's really been about the front side of these things lately. So my strategy, my ideal strategy, my ideal patterns are not like, you know, working perfectly this year. This is why, frankly, I haven't even made $100,000. I'm trading with a small account. I was up more um, earlier in the year. Um, not more than a hundred thousand, but more, you know, if you extrapolate how the year was going to go out, I was doing better in the beginning of the year, but I was taking on too much size. I got undisciplined. I lost 27,000 on one very undisciplined trade. I still remember that. So ever since then I've been trading small, but at the same time I've made, you know, what nearly $90,000 since that trade, taking small trades over and over again, all while teaching. Um, I'll post uh, a link to this video that I did yesterday uh, just on these spikers like POL that caught a lot of short sellers off guard. And, you know, I'm getting questions. People are like, how do you know it's the shorts? Um, these stocks don't deserve to go up this much. These stocks are junk, but they spike due to the Santa Claus rally, due to the January effect and due to short sellers. Short sellers are so, uh, you know, just, <laughs> I don't know what the right word is. Uh, I guess you could just say arrogant, you know, they, they think that they're on the right path. They think that everyone should be a short seller. They think that anybody who buys these stocks is crazy for me. You know, I've made millions going long and short. I just want to take good trades. Um, but I do have to warn against short selling because short sellers, as I say, in nearly every video, they are under investigation. There are several investigations into the whole short selling community right now. Also, short sellers love to post one or two big screenshots and they almost always ignore the plays that, you know, crush all of them. And the funny thing is because they're so arrogant and they think that everyone should be doing it, they talk, 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 talk on social media and in their, you know, toxic group thing chat rooms and everyone shorts at the same time. And so when I say that they're the new promoters, they are because promoters tried to get everyone to buy at the same time. Short sellers try to get everyone to sell and short sell at the same time to depress the stock price. Same mentality, just backwards. I know it's confusing. This is why I have to mention it so much, but it's a gift. POL did not deserve to go up to the tens. I specifically was warning about don't chasing it and remember to lock in profits. This is POL. I know this looks similar, but this is actually another supernova the next day. Um, these are not black swans. These are literally happening every single day. This is a short squeeze. Okay. This is the news. POL did deserve to go up from basically one to the twos. That's a nice hundred percent move, but this is a short squeeze. This is all short sellers shorting it in here. Thinking that the twos is going to be the top really, uh, adding in here in the threes and then just getting annihilated. And guess what? The stock did come down. 60% plus. So the shorts aren't wrong. 
that these stocks don't deserve to go up. But because there's so many of them, because they all think the same, because they all trade together, which I always warn about, you know, it doesn't make me very popular in the trading community where I'm like, you know, this is an individual sport. You should focus on your own trading. People like packs. Trading is lonely. Oh, I want to trade with my friends. Oh, let's trade together. Let's cheerlead together. Let's short sell together. All very dangerous themes. And POL is the exact reason why. Giant squeeze. Um, please, please, please watch this video. I will link it below. Not enough of you are watching this. If you miss a play, if you sell too soon, um, you get discouraged. Why? If you sell too soon, you should be encouraged. It means that it went higher. If you miss a play, you should be encouraged because you should be motivated to get the next one. Every single day, right now, during this time of year, there are giant supernovas. Do not skip a day learning. Do not say, oh, it's the holidays. I'm just going to take the week off. No, take the holiday off when the market is closed. Right now, this is the time to really make gains. If not profit gains, at least knowledge gains. You really need to push it. You need to go against what everyone else is doing. Never forget, 90% plus of traders lose. Why? Lack of preparation, lack of knowledge, lack of studying. Not lack of excuses, right? You can make any number of excuses. Tim, stop pushing. It's the holidays. It's nighttime. It's the weekend. You can do whatever you want but I'm never gonna stop giving you the information that you need to hear, not necessarily the information that you wanna hear. Um, so watch this video. This is a 30 plus minute video um, on some of the earlier squeezes. But in this video, I wanna talk about uh, my trades on LTRY, uh, cause I did pretty well. Uh, had some nice gains now up over 80K uh, on the year. Also SMFL, um, I had some losses. I'm not perfect, okay? Uh, you know, like I said, these are not my ideal patterns. I don't really love short squeeze plays, but I'm trying my best to capitalize. And even if I don't capitalize profit wise, I'm going to try to, you know, explain what's happening. So this is what's interesting too. Um, you know, just listen to what I'm saying, but also understand I'm just giving you my point of view. Jack Kellogg gave a great challenge webinar yesterday. All you challenge students should either tune in live or, or watch it archive. Jack Kellogg. You know, for those of you who don't know, he's made over $12 million. He started watching my videos uh, while he was a valet, parking other people's cars. Didn't make much money the first 18 months. He was actually down while he was studying and learning, but then he sized up. He was ready for the hot market, and now he's made over $12 million, $2 million in 2023 alone. And he's not even trading right now. He's taking the month of December off just to, like, be healthier and clear his head. Pretty amazing. If you can make $2 million in a year and take a month off whenever you want. Welcome to trading. Anyways. On his webinar, he was, you know, talking about how SMFL uh, doesn't have a good history uh, and, and so it shouldn't be bought. It usually fails. Um, Art of War Ellis, another one of the mentors in the uh, trading challenge, was like, you know, cheering him on. And he's like, exactly. Never buy these stocks. For me, <laughs> I did buy these stocks. Um, you know, I bought this stock specifically and I sold it too soon here. And then, like I said, the bounces haven't been that great. Um, you know, I think you should buy them. Why are Ellis and Jack saying don't buy them when I'm saying buy them? Because again, they're basing their buys based on history. They like stocks with legs that can spike two, three, four, five days in a row. I prefer stocks with history like that, that can be multi-day spikers. But as I've been saying all year long, this is a market where short sellers are too aggressive and it creates squeezes. And so because people like Jack who's made the most of his, you know, $2 million this year shorting. Ellis, you know, short sells a lot. A lot of other people short sell. They don't want to buy these stocks. They want to short them. And by the end of the day or by the end of two days, they're right. But for me, I don't care because right now I'm trading from Asia. You might see that I have like a lot of energy right now. As I'm filming this, it is 4 p.m. here in Asia and I am just waking up. <laughs> so I just had my morning coffee. Um, I'm all turned around. But I'm here working on my new documentary, hopefully wrapping it up soon. It's it's going to be crazy, you know, really eye-opening stuff with what my charity is doing here all over Asia. Um, but going back to SMFL, I think different. I trade different. Shorts aren't wrong that it fades by the end of the day. But you don't know if this is going to top in the mid threes. This could have gone to the fours or the fives or gone full supernova like POL to the tens. That's the beauty of short squeezes right now. and. 
I do think that you should be open to buying them, especially if you have the right perspective. I'm not saying buy them and hold them. Um, I bought this, you know, just a par partial fill. Um, and I was like, you know, this, this can really keep going because there's so many shorts and I was buying it. One of these spikes, which spike was it? 933. Oh, it was the first spike. I literally, this is funny because I, I, I don't even, or I mean, this is the first spike pre-market, but I don't even know like specific times because I'm trading, you know, 12, 13 hours ahead here in Asia. But this thing actually went to the three forties all in like a minute or two. Um, you know, I didn't get the three forties or the three fifties, but I sold it pretty well. Um, made a quick few hundred. And this was like inside of a few minutes. So again, recognize that Jack and Ellis aren't wrong. This is a failed one day spiker. It'll probably fail again and again, but that opens the door to short squeezes, especially near the open. Leave that comment underneath this video. Say, let me know if you understand that short squeezes happen. They're the main trend right now, and they work especially well pre-market or near the market open. You don't know how far it's going to go. Um, shorts are on the defense. By the end of the day, you know, they, they get better. SMFL, um, I had a nice profit the first time, and then I tried to buy it again, like a second dip buy here uh, in the low twos at 9.57 a.m. Uh, where was it? Like right, right in here. And I mistimed it because it, you know, it tanked basically a dollar a share and it went down like a dollar 40 a share. Although I was right. And, and you know, this is the thing like, yeah, this sucks that I had like a loss here, but you know, frankly, I just miss misjudged where the bottom would be. Um, and I, you know, when you're buying a, a short squeeze stock, like if, if it fails to bounce, if it fails to do what you think, like you got to play it safe. I don't regret, you know, selling it here. It, it just dropped more than I thought, but it also did bounce a dollar a share. So I ended up losing like 10 cents a share, but there turned out to be a dollar a share of upside. So newbies would say, Tim, you lost no history. Jack and, and Ellis were right. By the end of the day, Jack and Ellis and all the short sellers were right. I would say, I don't care. There was a dollar of upside here in, I mean, this was, I'm buying this at 9.57 a.m. Eastern. This is at 10.47. There's a dollar a share, like nearly 50% in the next 45 minutes. I just mistimed it a bit. So for me, this is a win. And I know some people are like, shut up, Tim. It's a loss. It's not a win. It is a win. Why? Because I'm still up overall between my two trades on SMFL. I, you know, didn't sell this one at the top. This could have been over a thousand dollars. Missed out on like a dollar a share here. I wouldn't have held for a dollar a share. At best, I'm going to make 50 cents a share. But between these two trades, I could have, would have, should have made 3,000 or, you know, more likely 2,500. But Either way, there's upside opportunity or, you know, call it 2000. Instead, I made 200, but I made 200 and I'm encouraged because I see that these stocks can spike multiple times. I even gave a warning here when it failed here. I said, triple top, you don't want to buy it after a triple top. And, you know, short sellers, if, if you really do want to short sell, just don't short sell in the morning. Wait until the afternoon. Look at this. The trend is, is pretty set and it's pretty good by the afternoon. Anyways, market open or near the market open, I have a little bit of gains and I'm encouraged because it's short selling season or short squeeze season and there's the Santa Claus rally. By the afternoon, and this is what I think many of you should also do, you don't need to sit in front of your computer all day. There's a lot of liars, fakes, screenshot heroes who think or make you think that you have to sit in front of your computer all day. Trading is a grind. It's a grind if you let it be. If you want to be a slave to the market, by all means, do it. You know, if you like slavery, go for it. Have fun. Enjoy having no life whatsoever. Sit in front of a computer all day. Sometimes you'll make money. Sometimes you'll lose money. You'll get random results. You'll get frustrated. You'll probably lose in the long run. But at least you'll feel like you worked hard. I would rather focus on ideal plays at ideal times. Um, and, you know, normally in a normal market, it's the market open and the market close. But at the same time, sometimes I'm buying midday breakouts or midday dips. Sometimes I'm trading pre-market or after hours. Um, right now, for me, it's like fire at will because these short squeezes work at all times um, or can work at all times. Anyways, yesterday I actually did trade near the market open and near, near the market close. First hour, last hour of the trading day. Um, in between, you know, I actually went out here in Asia. Like it was like midnight. 
uh, midnight to like 3 a.m. I went out with my friends and it was it was pretty fun. And then I came back and traded again. LTRY was uh, a breaking news play, stocks to trade breaking news. You can see the alert. They had an $18 million commitment. Really good commitment for a small company. Stock went from one up to the sevens. Amazing, amazing run up, short squeeze, momentum play. Um, I wasn't there for that. I, I, I missed it. But when it started tanking in here, I started dip buying because there's usually two opportunities to play these things. Whether you buy the initial spike, whether you buy the dip, um, you know, the, you don't have to always be there right at first. And for me, you know, I missed the initial run up, but right when I got back, I saw this and I'm dip buying it here in the four area, um, right around here. Why buy it in the four as well as down from the sevens? And it looked like it was, you know, holding up here and, and it bounced a little bit, but the bounce really wasn't convincing. Anytime you have a bounce play or a potential bounce play, it can, you know, come up and, and retest the highs. If you watch uh, yesterday's video lesson, uh, which I will link to right here and you know, it's linked below. Um, I was, I was dip buying EFSH and this was a POL sympathy play yesterday. Got a little screwed, um, just because of, you know, the, the overall market tanking and the, the China news really tanking it right when I was buying it. Um, but that's pretty much my goal, right? Like this is, this is interesting because Jack Kellogg was giving a webinar while I was trading LTRY and he was kind of like live commenting on my trades, which was cool. Um, I saw, you know, uh, Silverbird said, uh, perfect co-mentoring between you and Tim going on here. So cool. It's not always going to happen, but this is the beauty of Jack Kellogg giving challenge webinars and I'm making trades and you know, the beauty of the, uh, the challenge is that you learn from multiple traders. And like I said, we have different viewpoints. I still respect Ellis and Jack, even though I think they're wrong. Um, but they're also trading with, you know, size. So they're saying don't buy these one day runners because they're they're looking for multi day runners and they're looking to really you know grow their accounts with size. Many of you have one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollar accounts. You're just trying to you know partake in any of these supernovas. So understand it's a little different. And I teach you know people with small accounts and I trade as if I have a small account. So I think that you can really focus on these short squeeze stocks even if. Jack Ellis, myself, and some other traders might disagree. Just try to understand what we're all seeing. Um, and Jack didn't like my SMFL buys in the morning, but you know he was talking about why I was dip buying LTRY. And LTRY, like I got a little gain the first time, but not much, um, and it was kind of scary. So I was like, screw it. Like there's resistance at 420, 430. Let me just take you know a few hundred bucks. So at this point, you know I'm up basically like 500 on the day, you know, nothing huge, but I'm still watching it. Okay. Just because I'm trading a stock once doesn't mean like, Oh, I can't trade it again. Um, I'm always looking for more opportunities and then LTRY. Okay. Bounced a little bit in the fours, but it was choppy. No real opportunity. Then I was dip buying it right in here and I didn't want to dip buy. This is kind of the beauty of like looking of not looking to trade, um, of being like, you know, this, this, retired trader who's only going to come out of retirement when there's a play that's so good you would feel guilty missing it i know it's a mouthful but it's dipping but it's not really panicking remember this is up from the ones okay and there is good news like this isn't just a, a random short squeeze stock um so theoretically it could bounce back to the fours back to the fives i don't know if it can get back to the sixes but you know this can bounce um, and so when you're, when you're dip buying, obviously I was wrong on the SMFL, uh, dip buy, or I was wrong on my timing. So recognizing that I was a little too aggressive on SMFL on the dip buy, which created the loss the second time, I didn't want to rebuy LTRY, but as Jack went over during the live webinar and I'll go over now, uh, the low here was like 362. The low here was like 336. And then the low here was like 323. Each one of these dips, and I, you know, I didn't know that it was going to bounce a dollar a share, but each one of these dips is less and less, right? And in here at 320, I mean, it's already down 50% off the highs. So when you have something down 50% off the highs in like an hour, it still has news. It's short squeeze season. Uh, you know, just because this usually fails doesn't mean that it's always going to fail. Short sellers might get too aggressive. So I dip bought this here 
because I thought, okay, there's just more upside, especially heading into the close. Um, you have to really be aware of all this stuff. Some people think like, oh, Tim, just focus on patterns, just focus on technical stuff. You really have to understand everything as a whole. Do you understand the January effect? Do you understand tax loss selling right now? Do you understand the Santa Claus rally? Do you understand short selling and short squeezes? Like I'm combining a lot of different, uh, you know, just niches and rules and concepts into this trade. So it looks like, oh my God, Tim, you, you nailed it. You nailed the bottom. How'd you do that? Because I'm experienced. I didn't know this was going to be the bottom. I just thought that there was more upside than downside. And even though I made 1200 on this and everyone was like, wow, this is cool. Especially because like Jack was literally live commenting on it. I sold it way too soon. You know, it, it basically spiked so quickly. And I was like, screw this. I'm out. Like, this is scary. I locked this in. Like trading with a small account, I'm trading very conservative. I know some people with big accounts, they like to turn off their profit and loss column. I don't think that's good if you have a small account. You know, small account, the whole goal is to learn how to lock in singles, how to grow your small account. You can always get more aggressive, um, you know, much later on. But in the beginning of your career, just learn to take singles like this. And it was bouncing. And I was pretty shocked that like I called the bottom pretty much to a T, like to the minute or two. And it was just because... Again, heading into the close, uh, former runner, um, you know, down 50% off the highs and every little dip here is less and less. So all of these indicators told me this can bounce. Um, you know, I, again, I didn't know it was going to go all the way up to 420, like 320 to 420. This is a fantastic dollar a share bounce into the close. Um, but at the same time, it was like, you know, it was good risk reward. That's what it comes down to. You know, you can analyze whatever. I prefer dip buys near the open. Some people say like, Tim, I don't understand why you're dip buying here. I'll try anything when it's like speculative trading season, like it is right now. I try different concepts. I try different ideas. Um, but this one had several indicators going for it. And right here, I mean, it was, it was right in here when it was bouncing and it bounced so quickly. Um, I thought that this resistance here in the 370s was going to hold. So I thought best case, you know, 330 to 370. That was what I was thinking. Um, and instead it went all the way up to 420. But, you know, I sold pretty well, uh, you know, nearly two grand on the day. And again, almost every single trade I could have done better on. Uh, SMFL, this could have been a thousand. This this loss, even though I mistimed it and I don't I don't regret like locking it in you know, just being safe. Cause it was, it was scary how, how fast it was dropping. Um, but this could have been literally, I mean, this went up a dollar a share, but I wouldn't have held for a dollar a share. Best case, I would have made, you know, 2000 on it, but that would be a $2,500 difference. So if you're, you're looking at my trades and you're like, wow, Tim, good job. You know, you made nearly two grand. You really nailed it. I really did not nail it. Uh, this could have been a thousand, but you know, you're not going to be perfect. This could have been 2000, but between these trades where I made 200, this easily could have been $3,000 in profits. These two trades, um, you know, this one I sold pretty well cause it just, it couldn't really bounce, but this one I missed out on another 50 cents a share. Okay. So this would have been another $2,000. So this would have been like a $3,000 profit. So Yes, I made nearly $2,000 yesterday, but coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know, and it's really tough to, to be perfect, but the opportunity was to make like five or six or even $7,000 on these exact trades. So when I'm doing well, it's not that I'm nailing it to a T, it's just that there's so much opportunity. And when you start to realize that there's so much opportunity, you start to realize why I teach in the first place. Okay. Like if you look at all my trades, everyone's like, wow, Tim, a few thousand into over 7 million. I am taking the bare minimum of what is possible. Jack Kellogg has already made nearly double what I made in half the time. Tim Rutani has made more than double. I got more students coming up. I am not best case scenario. The opportunity is there. I'm taking little bits, but whether I sell too soon, sell too early, at least I'm on the right track. You know, at least I'm not a short seller being like, oh, I'm glad I avoided this. This is how I survive. You absolute moron shorts. You can go long. Anyways, 
it's a lost cause. They can't think outside their toxic leper uh, group thing chat rooms. And it's sad, but it's also beautiful because it creates opportunity for us. So another day, amazing spikers. Congrats to everybody with stocks to trade breaking news, which nailed LTRY in the beginning. I wasn't around for that, but there was opportunity on the dip. Uh, congratulations to challenge students. You know, I saw everyone congratulating or, or thanking Jack for a great webinar. Pretty cool. Um, you know, do me a favor. Thank Jack Kellogg in the comments too. Like he doesn't have to do this. Um, but at the same time, he likes giving back to the community that really, you know, helped blow him up. Um, and those of you who are asking me like, when's Tim Grittani going to do another webinar? Challenge students, there are 70 plus archive Tim Grittani webinars. Let me just show you a link. I don't think you realize it. Um, this is profitly, I don't know if you can see, oh, hold on. Well, I don't know what's going on. We'll see if this is still recording. Um, but I was trying to show you the link, but profitly slash ticker slash Gratani. Let me just try to push it over here. Uh, I don't want to screw up my screens again. Anyways, profitly slash ticker slash Gratani, and you can see all of his webinars. There's 71 webinars. You should watch them all if you're in the challenge. It's crazy to me that many people aren't doing it. You have so many resources. Get better prepared for plays like this. Doesn't matter if it's a webinar from a few years ago. It's the same patterns. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Leave a comment below if you're capitalizing either trading or knowledge-wise. Thank you.